Alrighty guys, what is going up? I hope you guys are all having a great and amazing day today. Now in today's episode, we're gonna be breaking down my 32 stocks for my dividend portfolio. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and if you guys get anything in value, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you guys have any questions or concerns, go ahead and ask them in the comments down below. And if you guys wanna use promo code DIVIDENDS to get 50% off my course, it's definitely worth it. You guys will learn how to properly invest in the stock market. So at least check it out. So now let's jump into it, roll that intro, let's go. So now, yes, the broker that I'm using is M1 Finance. Now, the reason why I love M1 Finance is because it's a very easy way to invest in the stock market. Now, it really focuses on my main strategy, dollar cost averaging. So I can invest anywhere from $200 to $1,000 per week into this account and just sit back and relax and not have to check the day-to-day -day price on these because these are all long-term investments. And M1 Finance is really sweet because they have what you call pie investing. And this makes it super easy to diversify your money because I love 40% going in the S&P 500, another 5% going in bonds and really just the rest spread out into some high quality stocks, ETFs, bonds, and just it's a great way to build a portfolio and have defense and really invest properly. But now let's look at the stocks that I have. Let's go ahead and look. So if you guys want to sign up with M1 Finance, you guys can get 10 bucks. I'm not like getting sponsored or anything. I do have a referral with them, but you guys can get 10 bucks for signing up. So check them out. But now looking at my portfolio, you guys can see the year to date is up 30%. So that's pretty decent to be honest. That's actually outperforming all the major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. So that's really cool. Now scrolling down here, you guys can see the performance and you guys can see that huge fall in March. And that was pretty much when everybody lost their shirt. But if you would have just relaxed and honestly bought more, you'd have been just fine. Cause you guys can see it had a beautiful recovery. Now looking up here, you guys can see I do have 32 holdings. So these are either stocks, bonds, and that's it. Cause that's all I have. And ETFs of course. And then you guys can see my dividend yield is 1.6%. Uh, really, I should be focusing on getting that number up, but Honestly, I would rather invest into high quality stocks that have a lower dividend yield rather than more riskier stocks that pay a higher yield. That's kind of my mindset behind it. But now, looking at the first investment, now you guys can see I'm invested in SPY. This is the S&P 500. Uh, this is a ETF that has been around the block for a while. You know, I can count on this really not going anywhere and this has an average return of right around 9.8%. This is perfect for all types of investors from dividend investors to growth investors. I feel like everybody should be investing in the S&P 500. You guys can see that the five year chart is absolutely beautiful, beautiful upward trend. Yes, you guys can see those little falls, but honestly, this is just a investment that is perfect for everybody. But now going back here, you guys can see the next investment is to go into VIG. Now this is a Vanguard dividend appreciation ETF. So this has a ton of awesome holdings in it from Johnson & Johnson to Microsoft. So it's super diversified and you get a nice dividend yield of around 1.6%. So it's super, per it's perfect. And on top of it, the expense ratio is super cheap, 0.06%. So it's super affordable, $6 for every 10,000 you have invested. It's perfect for everybody. And the main goal of this ETF is actually to find dividend paying stocks. So it's super awesome to get some cash flow coming in and it's great. So now moving on to the next one here, we have QQQ. This is another ETF that is super diversified in tech. You guys can see the top holdings are Apple and Microsoft. So you do get a smaller dividend yield of around 0.5%, uh, but honestly it's better than nothing um, and the expense ratio is super cheap too. Now this one is pretty sweet because honestly this one has actually outperformed all the major indexes, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. So QQQ is a must for all types of investors. So now really those were the main ETFs that I have in this account. I do have one other bond, but the rest are honestly just stock. So you guys can see that I do invest around 5% of my money in Home Depot. Now me personally, I think that Home Depot does have a ton of long-term potential. You get a perfect dividend of around 2.2%, and that's around $5 every single year. So it's perfect for all types of investors too. And you guys can see that the five-year chart is beautiful. This honestly has out performed 
all of the major indexes, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. So we gotta go back there, but it's a perfect stock for everybody here. The next one we have Costco, and guess what? I got paid my special dividend from Costco. It was crazy high. Um, it was like $20, just over $20 actually, because they did do that special dividend, so it was $7 for every share, and I had three shares, so it was uh, around $21. But Costco is perfect for all types of investors. It's another retail store, but it's honestly outperformed all the major indexes, and on top of it, guys, pays dividends. It's perfect for everybody. Now the next one here is uh, BND. Now this is Vanguard's total bond market. Now I know a lot of you are saying right now, Carter, don't invest in bonds. Well, the main reason why I invest in bonds is because I use it as a defense in my portfolio. Now if that's just say I was super invested into stocks and ETFs, that's great. But imagine if you could have almost like a hoarding of cash that grows and pays you dividends. That's what I use um, the bonds for. So as stuff becomes undervalued, I will sell some of my bonds and invest into that ETF or stock. That's what I did in March and it worked out very, very well. But this has a dividend yield of around 2.2% and it's super awesome, guys, because it grows at around 5%, but honestly, you don't have to even worry about this thing falling. You know, it barely moves every single day and it's really, it's really, really good. So now scrolling back down here, you guys can see now that just kind of go through them because I think a lot of you guys know a lot of these uh, stocks and everything like that. So now around 3% is going into Apple. I'm a huge Apple fan. I have the iPhone, I have an iPad, a Mac. I'm super invested into the company mentally and uh, financially. Now moving on, we have Disney. I'm a huge Marvel guy, I'm sure you guys know. Um, Disney with 2% pays dividends, it's great. Now the next one we have is Visa. Visa is another financial stock, so that's really cool too. Pays dividends and it's grown very, very fast lately. It's perfect for a long-term investment. Now we have Google, we have Microsoft, and we do have Amazon. Now Amazon does not pay a dividend, but this is one of those growth stocks that have a ton of long-term potential. Now moving on from Amazon, we do have uh, Waste Management. This was just another new pickup that I recently did uh, a couple weeks ago. I do invest around 1% in them, another 1% in Walmart, and then I do invest another 1% in Square. I honestly invest a little more into Square and uh, Amazon because they have a ton of long-term potential, and I do think Square is a very, very undervalued stock, especially right now. I know a lot of people would like to debate me on this, but I think Square could be one of the fastest growing and top financial stocks within the next uh, couple of years. So now moving on, we have Tesla. I do highly invest in Tesla. I do have over $10,000 just invested, and that is well over $36,000 now, so it's grown very, very fast lately. But now moving on, we have uh, PepsiCo, we have Procter & Gamble, we have McDonald's, MasterCard, Lowe's, NVIDIA, JP Morgan, we got Johnson & Johnson at 1%, we got a lot of these guys, Bank of America, AT&T, Facebook is another stock that doesn't pay a dividend, but it's one of those growth stocks, so it's super good. We have Pfizer, we have Cisco, Coca-Cola, um, ABBV, I can never say that name, and then uh, Broadcom. So now these are the top stocks right now that I'm holding for the long term. Like I said, 95 to about 99% of these stocks pay dividends, so it's a super awesome way to compound your money because what I'm doing is I'm automatically investing all my dividends right back into the company because that will start that snowball effect because maybe this year that's just say I get $100 in dividends then next year I get 120 and then it so on and so on and so on and instead of having linear growth you'll have a J curve growth it's a super awesome way for really anybody to make money in the long term and on top of it I always think it's super smart to be diversified because some of these stocks carry a little more risk than others. You know, a company like Square definitely carries a lot more risk than a company like Home Depot. You know, Home Depot has been around the block for a while. Square is kind of a newer company with a lot more growth, but a lot more risk. And you guys have to understand that. And I always think it's smart to have a nice solid base of ETFs, bonds, or even blue chip stocks before you invest into those growth stocks. And I still highly invest into ETFs, into bonds, into multiple other diversified ETFs because it's a perfect way to invest in other sectors and other commodities that you can't do without. But guys, these are the top stocks and ETFs right now that I'm holding. I don't feel very good, my nose is stuffy, but I don't know. We'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. Remember to stay happy, stay positive, and stay safe out there. Take care.
understand.